Is that how it's supposed to be? Is that right? Am I doing this right? Is the lighting good? I'm very new to YouTube. Somebody please help me. I have no idea what I'm doing. Hey guys, this is Harrison with Watch Hill Outfitters. This week we're going to be tying a little something bigger. Uh, last week's fly was the Harry's Master Bait. If you haven't checked out that video, uh, just look up Harry's Master Bait on our channel and you'll find it. This week we're tying my version of a Popovic style beast fly with the reverse bucktail and the extended body, basically the whole shebang. I've got those in two different colors just to show you guys for now. I have a million of these things. I really like tying them. They're a lot of fun and they're good for imitating that large profile bait like bunker or herring or anything big. So let's get into it. So I've laid out the materials for this fly. Uh, it's basically just a bunch of bucktail uh, starting with white and we're also going to use a couple of different kinds of hackle here. This is a white kind of long hackle, almost for tying dry flies. I like it because it's really thin and has a lot of movement in the water. And then this guy is going to go along the side if you remember what that fly looks like. Uh, basically this is just going to go along the side of the body and look like a lateral line or something like that. It just kind of looks pretty. And then we're going to be tying the first part of this fly actually on 100 pound clear monofilament. And we're going to be attaching that to our 4-0 Stinger A-Rex hooks, which look like that. These are a really nice hook. They barely ever get dull, and they rarely bend out on the bigger fish that you're likely to catch on these flies. So we're actually gonna be ditching the vise for this first part of the fly, and instead grabbing our 100-pound monofilament. We're gonna cut off a piece of that, if I can find my scissors. I like to cut off a piece maybe three inches long, about like that. And the first thing that I'm going to come and do is just get the thread onto the line. I like to leave about maybe a, a four-aught hook length of free space so that we can tie that down later. So we'll start it about an inch and a half in. And the easiest way to do this is actually just to take it and spin it. And so that just wraps it onto your line there. And just spin that right on there. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is tie on some white bucktail right to the end there. I like to find the longest white that I can find. Helps to have lots of bucktails. All righty. Trim it right down there at the base. And we'll take some of those ones in the middle out. Just want those long ones. So there you have it. Now we're going to go in and make sure that that thread is all the way at the back of our monofilament. And we're going to take it and I like to just kind of wrap it around so that it's on all sides and I pinch it and I start to wrap again and that'll give me a good base and then I take it and I'll really yam down on it there give that some force we don't want that coming off that's the thing with these flies there's so many parts that if one part doesn't look good just don't move on until you get it looking how you want. That looks pretty good to me. So next thing that we're gonna do is knot off right there. And that knot basically provides you a third hand so that now you can put this down without your bucktail all flaying up. And then we're gonna get a little bit of glue. And I just take some of that and just run it right along. I basically glue every single section of this fly because once one part goes, it all starts to go and it's too nice of a fly to get destroyed. And then 
I'll take like a napkin or a paper towel and just kind of rub off that excess glue. Just like that. So now we're dry and ready to go for the next one and we don't have to wait. The next material we're tying on is this white saddle hackle. You want to pick three that are about the same and a little bit on the longer side. Let's see. I plucked this pretty good already. It's starting to give me slim pickings here. Alrighty, so those are nice and long. And what I do is kind of try and line them up. You want a little bit of a taper on them so they don't all have to be the exact same length. But this one in particular is like really long, so I'll bring that one back. Right about there. And then I just go in and kind of cut them all at once. Doesn't have to be pretty. And then go up. Trim a little bit off of each side so that the ends end up looking like that. Very not pretty, but all those little fibers are gonna help this actually seat into that fly. So then we come in to our line, and I like to tie them so that the, the shiny side is facing down. So what I mean by that is so that they actually are pointed out like that. Like the natural bend of the feather wants to bring it away from the fly. And that just helps build that present, that larger presentation that you're trying to go for, that larger profile. I'll tie one on the top, then I'll come in, go to the other side, tie one on basically the opposite side, and then I'll go in and tie one on the third side. You want to kind of just split it into three. So that looks about right. Doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to cover over all of this with our bucktail. So don't worry too much if it doesn't look pretty. But that looks about right. They're all splaying out in different directions. That's what I want. And then you hit that with a little bit of glue. Take your napkin. Maybe throw a couple more wraps on there just to be safe. And then make your knot again. So now that you got your hackles attached, you got it glued, we're gonna take another round of bucktail. Again, you want these ones fairly long and not too heavy on the bucktail. You want them to be sparse because it's you're gonna add so much bucktail to this fly that it's gonna weigh you down a lot and make it really tough to cast if you just keep hammering it with bucktail. So just as much as you need to create that profile. So that looks about right. I'm gonna tie this one in about maybe a pinky length further up on the mono. And then I'm gonna trim it so that, see I have my fibers are about that long on the one that I tied before. And I'm gonna come in and make those maybe just an inch shorter on the next one so that you start building that taper. So I'm gonna cut a little bit off and then I'm gonna come in and tie this on. Still haven't tied on anything reverse style yet. Still just building that tail. And then you wanna make sure that's evenly distributed around the fly. Use your fingernail, get in there, push it around till it looks how you want it to. That looks pretty good to me. So I do a couple more cinching wraps, make a knot, and we're going to take some glue, our trusty glue. And next we come up about another maybe pinky width up. 
And we're going to knot that off right there. This is where things start to get fun. So now we're going to tie this next section on reverse style. That looks about right. Pull some of those larger ones out, or longer ones I mean. Pull some of the shorter ones out too. So we're going to take that and we're actually going to tie this in the opposite way of the rest of our fly. Once again, you want to make sure that that is wrapped all the way around your fly, around the monofilament. Put a couple wraps in there. See how it looks. Pinch it if need be. I'm going to push that back actually a little bit. I came a little too far forward. And then do a knot on there. Next what we're going to do is come in and trim some of this on the sides here. I like to leave a little bit of it just because it kind of adds to the profile of the body. So maybe that much. Glue it. And then the next tool that we're going to use is very important. This is, I think, just the outside of a pen. Very, very important tool. So we are going to take this and put it into, or put our monofilament into the end of it. And then we are going to just push it down so that we can push all of those materials back. And it's going to be nice and even. And we come through with our fingers and do the last little touches. Pull up on that bobkin, bobbin. And now you want to find where it's going to come through that bucktail and start tying right there above it. So you can see now that's forming that big profile, but that's a little bit too big. So what we're going to do is actually just tie that until it cinches back a little bit. So there you go. Nice broad profile. Starting to build that body. And then we're going to go up and we're actually just going to do this again. So we'll take our next bit of bucktail. Cut that. So that looks pretty good. Next thing that we're going to do is take this and tie it onto our hook shank. So there you have it. Part one, done. Alrighty, now we got our A-Rex hook in the vise. We're going to come in and just lay a base along that hook. Now we're going to tie in the section that we just created on the monofilament. Looks about right. We actually made it a little bit long, so we'll trim that now. I gotta get some new scissors. And we're gonna 
to come in and, you guessed it, glue the living shit out of it. Pardon my French. I probably shouldn't be swearing. This is, I guess, intended to be a PG channel? I don't know. Like I said, I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. I, oh, I just swore again. Whoops. <laughs> Alrighty, boom. Next thing we're gonna do is come in with a little bit of white, and I'm actually gonna mix that with a little bit of pink. So now we got half white, half pink, but that doesn't look very good. So what we're gonna do is pull the fibers as if we were stacking them all in line, and that's actually gonna mix them pretty well for us. and we can stack them while we're at it. So now you can see it's a little bit more uniform, the pink and the white. Let me just go through, separate it up just a little bit more till we're totally happy. I'm pretty content with that. So we're gonna take it and we're gonna measure it so that it keeps creating that nice profile and we're going to cut it. Once again, we're going to be tying this reverse style. So go in, spread that around the hook shank. Cinch it down nice and tight. That looks good. Missed a couple of spots, so we'll just use the fingernail to push that all around. Pull out any short fibers and glue it. Well, first we're going to take a couple of clips off of that. Come forward, and this next one is where we're going to really add some color. So we're going to take a bigger clump of pink, something about like that, and then we're going to take some of this kind of, it's like a mustardy color. I like this one for kind of doing the intermediate layers of this fly. I haven't tied one with completely this color, but I don't think it would make a bad color to be honest with you for a whole fly maybe for another video pull out some of the short stuff put that on with our pink and then maybe take a little bit of chartreuse while we're at it so now we've got all three of those colors just waiting to be blended together Now that you've got a nice even blend there, we're going to tie this on, take out some of those shorter ones, measure it out. So I want to take a little bit longer than what I measure because remember we're going to be tying this on reverse style which is going to use about maybe a quarter inch of bucktail. Looks pretty even come in, trim off just a little bit of that, glue it, push it back, and 
Make sure it's all even on there. So that's kind of a little bit more flayed out than the last one was. And that's kind of how this fly is going to go. We're just going to keep making them stand up more and more as we get to the head of the fly so that it creates that nice body shape. I like to kind of pinch those into shape too while the glue is still in there and not quite dry yet. That just helps to build that shape that we're looking for. All right, the next one, we're gonna go a little bit darker. We're probably only gonna be able to fit two more layers on here. So we wanna start creating that gradation of light to dark. So for the next one, we're not gonna use any pink or chartreuse. We're gonna use just this mustardy color. And that's gonna be probably a significant portion, maybe something like that. A little bit more than it was in the last bunch. And then we're gonna take a little bit of this olive and then a little bit of this darker olive. So now we've got those nicely blended up. We're going to throw that on next, measure it out. That looks about right. If you're very cautious with your materials and don't like using a lot of materials, this fly is not for you, just so that you know. Probably a little bit late in the video to tell you that, but disclaimer, spoiler alert. Next, we're going to tie in some of these guys. Pick two that are about the same length. We'll tie that right about there. Does that look even to you guys? Blink once if it looks even. Did you blink? It looks even to me. All right, for our last blend of bucktails, we're gonna make them a little bit darker. This is gonna be the head of the fly, so we want it nice and dark. So I blended up an olive a darker olive, and even a little bit of the back of this bucktail. Some of these fibers right here, just to add a little bit of a darker color to that overall. And I'm going to leave a little bit of this, these fibers here because they help to create that bulk at the head of the fly that moves water and just kind of attracts the fish as well as contributing to that nice bulky head profile.
ready. So we're going to do one more little bit up here at the front just to finish that off. This one's going to be a little bit shorter just so that it feels like that head is coming down to a point and ending. So we're going to use the same colors there but just with a little bit more of that darker bit of bucktail this time. I like to make sure that a lot of the fibers are on the top and bottom at this point just to keep that nice thin profile. So now that you've got that about where you want it, uh, the next thing I do is come in and put on some eyes. I use these hairline dubbin kind of stick on uh, fake jungle cock eyes. And you want to line that up, make sure it's in the right spot. And that looks pretty good. Then I'll put one on this side. Don't want to have a one eyed fish swimming around. There we go. I trim those off. And tie them back. That way it really locks those eyes in. Those are not getting taken off by a bluefish, hopefully. And then the last thing we're going to do is whip finish. Now we're going to trim that off and glue the hell out of that head. This ended up a little bit bulkier than I anticipated. So it's going to be likely that it wants to come over that eye, so you really have to glue that to make sure that it doesn't, or rather that it can't. So there you have the finished fly. So let's take this thing down to the creek and see how she swims. So we're down here at a little creek near the shop, actually. Uh, took the dog. He's taking a pee. Come on, Cholo. So we're going to take this sucker and see how she swims. Well, it seems like it works okay. Hopefully we'll find it in a big fish's mouth this summer. It's getting there. Just a couple more weeks and we'll have some migrators here. So give it a try. Uh, it's pretty easy to do if you uh, just take some time and try your best. So hopefully I'll tie another fly next week. Thanks for watching, guys. What's my dog doing? He's drinking the water. It's probably poison.